Welcome to Young Minds of Class 8th. I am Nancy Bora, your digital mentor, and today we will be starting with Unit 5, The Changing Times, Chapter 5, The Revolt of 1857. So let's get the ball rolling. Today we are going to discuss about causes of the revolt, spread of the revolt, suppression of the revolt, result of the revolt, beginning of the revolt of 1857, case study of revolt at Awadh, and failure of the revolt. First, let us familiarize ourselves with some history terms. Ideological Pertaining to a body of ideas that reflects the belief and interest of a group and asks for political action is known as ideological. Maladministration Insufficient or corrupt administration is known as maladministration. Principality A small territory ruled by a prince is known as principality. Batta Overseas allowance for fighting wars outside India is known as Batta. Cartridge Sealed casing containing a bullet. Scarlegious Irreligious or sinful. Mutiny Rebellion by soldiers. Confederacy, Confederacy A league or alliance of several states with similar interest. Chiefshan The leader of people or a clan. Eponymous means of the same name. Now, the revolt which broke out in the northern in the revolt which broke out in the northern and central India in 1857 is now popularly known as the Revolt of 1857. Scholars till date are divided in their opinion as to whether it was just a mutiny of sipais or a mere product of their discontent or the first Indian War of Independence. British historians are of the view that it was just a mutiny of the sipais. The Indian soldiers of lower ranks in English army, they asserts the they assert this war was a mutiny as the whole of India did not participate in it. South India, Punjab and Bengal were only marginally affected. The early Indian historians opine that it was indeed the first war of independence as it had a widespread effect. The coming together of soldiers of different regions, rulers and chiefs of different states and principles to fight for the common aim of overthrowing the British rule was unprecedented in Indian history. Many sections of Indian society, landlords, peasants, artisans, scholars, joined the revolt. Modern Indian historians maintain that uprising of 1857 was just a revolt of certain discontent groups against colonial policies. Students, let's connect to history. It was, ru it was rumored that the rebels used to spread secret messages through chapatis which were carried from villages to villages. Puzzled British officer soon referred to this curious event as the Chapati movement. Now, let's talk about causes of the revolt. The revolt of 1857 was the biggest challenge to British authority. It started with the mutiny of the soldier but was soon joined by all the sections of the Indian society. The revolt was the result of various grievances of the people against the British rule. First, let's talk about political causes. The British land revenue policies angered many chiefs and landlords by robbing them of their power and privileges. Some landlords like those of Truenivali, Aligarh and Travancore organized localized revolts even before 1857. The British annexed territories on the basis of the subsidiary alliance and the doctrine of lapse and by discontinuing the titles and pensions of rulers. They thus dislodged many native rulers including Rani Lakshmi Bai or Jhansi and Nana Sahib, the adopted son of Peshwa Baji Rao II. They deposed Nawab Wajid Ali Shah of Awadh on grounds of misgovernment. The descendants of Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah II were given orders to vacate the place in the Red Fort in the event of the Emperor's death. All this caused widespread anxiety and resentment among the people. Here is an image of Nawab Bajid Ali Shah. Now, let's talk about Economic causes. The dispossession of rulers led to retrenchment of thousands of employees. They were deprived of the means of livelihood. The landlords or zamindars were deprived of their estates by the act of abolition of inams. Besides the decline of cottage industry, the exploitation of the economic resources of India, especially raw materials for the British industries, the tariff on Indian goods merchants had also developed hatred against the British rule. The discrimination of Indians and the European as matter of employment opportunities and social supremacy of the British had given birth to suspicion and dislike for the British. Students, let's connect to history once again. 
The revolt of 1857 is often termed as the first war of independence because for the first time in Indian history, different segments of the Indian society stood up against a common enemy, the British. Now, let's talk about the religious causes. The fear among the people that the British government was determined to destroy their religion and convert all Indians to Christianity. The increasing activities of the Christian missionaries and the actual conversions made by them were taken as a proof of this fear. The policy of taxing lands belonging to temples and mosques lent further support to this mass fear. The belief that their religion was under threat united all sections of society against a common enemy. Now, let's talk about social causes. The English also began to interfere in the social and religious life of the people. Reforms such as the abolition of sati, legalization of widow remarriage and the extension of western education to women were looked upon by the orthodox. Indians as example of interference in the social customs of the country. The social discrimination faced due to so-called racial superiority also led to much resentment. Educated Indians were denied promotions and the opportunity for appointment to high positions. This turned them against the British. Here is an image of Sati Pratha. Now, let's talk about military causes. The rising discontent in the country was reflected in the behavior of the sepoys who formed seven-eighths of the British troops in India. The sepoys were discontent because their salaries and opportunities of promotions were not equal to those of the British soldiers. Even the special allowance that was given to them when they were sent to war was discontinued. Besides, the sepoys resented British regulations, banning beards and the use of caste marks and the replacements of turban with leather caps. There was a sepoy revolt against such regulations at Velour in 1806. Many sepoys also resented having to cross the seas in violation of social taboos to fight wars for the British. In 1828, the sepoys at Barakpur revolted against an order to go to Burma by sea. In 1856, the General Service Enlistment Act made it compulsory for sepoys to travel beyond India's frontiers by land and sea. Now, let's talk about immediate cause. In 1856, the Enfield were introduced in the company's army. The cartridge used it in had a greased cap, which had to be bitten off before use. The Hindu and Muslim sepoys were alarmed because they believed that the grease was made from the fat of those animals which their respective religion forbade to eat. This news spread like a wildfire. Here is an image of Enfield rifle. Now, let's talk about beginning of the revolt of 1857. The soldiers were simply protesting against the use of the greased cartridges. But the government neglected their protest, insistent on the use of cartridges and punished those who refused to obey them. In the first quarter of the 1857, when the soldiers of the 19th Regiment at Barakpur refused to use the greased cartridges, the leaders were punished and the regiment was disbanded. The revolt began on 29 March 1857. A sepoy named Mangal Pandey of 34th Regiment fired at his sergeant major and asked his comrades to revolt against the British in defense of their caste and religion. But he and one of his active comrades were captured, tried and executed. On 9th May 1857, 85 sepoys of a cavalry regiment at Meerut refused to use the grease cartridges. There were punishment with 10 years of rigorous imprisonment and disgrace publicly. Here is an image of Mangal Pandey. On May 10th, the 3rd Cavalry Regiment at Meerut revolted and the infantry also became a part to it. The soldier released the prisoners, killed some English officers and civilians and marched to Delhi. They captured Delhi on May 12th and Bahadur Shah II was proclaimed the Emperor of India. Here is an image of Rani Lakshmi Bai, Tatya Tope, Nain Nana Sahib. Now, let's talk about spread of the revolt. Large parts of the North and Central India and Bihar joined the revolt. The important centers of the revolt were Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Bareilly, Jhansi and Ara in Bihar. In Delhi, the aged emperor Bahadur Shah was the symbolic leader but the real command was with the court of soldiers headed by General Bhakt Khan at Kanpur. The revolt was led by Lana Sahib, the adopted son of the last Peshwa. Here is an image of Bhakt Khan. Students, let's connect to history once again. British General John Hearsay offered Ishwari Prasad, a jimidar of the 34th Regiment, to arrest Mangal Pandey when he decided to open fire at his superiors. But he refused. 
Ishwari Prasad was sentenced to death and hanged on 22 April 1857. The chief responsibility of fighting on behalf of Nana Sahib fell on the shoulders of Tatya Tope, one of his most loyal commanders. Tatya Tope won immortal fame because of patriotism, determined fighting and skillful guerrilla operations. One of the greatest leaders of the revolt was Rani Lakshmibai of Jhansi. Tales of her bravery and courage and military skills have inspired Indians ever since the revolt of 1857. Kumar Singh, a zamindar of Jagdishpur near Ara, was the chief organizer of the revolt in Bihar. Though he was nearly 80 years of age, he was an outstanding military leader. Apart from these leaders, in northern and central India, there were popular civilian revolts. The common people too joined the revolt, often fighting with spears, axes, bows, arrows and lattes. Here is an image of Kumar Singh. Now, let's talk about the leaders and centres of the revolt where it spread from Delhi. First, the centre was Delhi and leader was Bahadur Shah Zafar. Commander-in-chief was Bhakti Khan. Second, Kanpur. The leader was Nana Sahib and commander-in-chief was Tatya Tope and Adimullah. Third, Lucknow, also known as Awadh. The leader was Begum Hazrat Mahal and her commander was Maulvi Ahmadullah. Then, we have Bareilly, Khan Bahadur Khan. Then, we have Bihar, also known as Ara. We had the leader, Kuwar Singh. Then we have Jhansi and the leader was Rani Lakshmi Bai. Then we have Kalpi and the leader was Tatya Tope. Now, let's talk about suppression of the revolt. Delhi was captured by the British forces on 20 September 1857. The Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar was taken prisoner and deported to Rangoon in Burma, now called Myanmar. The Mughal dynasty thus came to an end. Bhakt Khan, Rani Lakshmi Bai, Khan Bahadur Khan and Kuwar Singh died fighting. Nana Sahib and Begum Hazrat Mahal escaped to Nepal. Tatya Tope was captured and hanged. After the suppression of the revolt, however, the rebel soldiers and the civilian population suffered a terrible fate. The British used utmost brutality and ruthless to suppress it. They burned down villages and resorted to public hanging or blowing people off at the mouth of the cannons. All these acts of brutality were done to dissuade another mass revolt in future. Here is an image of British troops blowing up Kashmiri gate to enter Delhi. Now let's talk about an account of a 19-year-old and British officer, Edward Vibart. The orders went out to shoot every person. It was literally murder. I have seen many blood and awful sights lately, but such as one as I witnessed yesterday, I pray I never see again. The women were all spread, but their screams on their seeing their husbands and son butchered were most painful. I feel no pity, but when some old grey-bearded man is brought and shot before your very eyes, hard must be the man's heart, I think, who can look and with an indifference. This is extracted from William Delhi Rumpel's The Last Mughal, The Fall of the Dynasty. Now, let's talk about failure of the revolt. No doubt, the Indian leaders were brave, skillful, patriotic, but there were no match to the English generals like Havelock, Campbell, etc. They were more able and experienced. In all areas, the revolt was suppressed within a little over a year of its outbreak. Many reasons were responsible for the failure. Here is an image of Henry Havelock. Modern technology and warfare of the British, such as guns and cannons, overpowered the Indian conventional war equipments, such as swords, spears and spikes. The railways, telegraphs and other modes of communication enabled the British to take quick action. The mutiny failed because the mutineers had no coherent plan and were ill-organized. Even though the Indian rebels had strong and brave warriors who fought, well, they were leaderless and lacked experienced guidance. The revolt could not spread to the whole of the country as many areas such as Assam, Orissa, Rajasthan, parts of Punjab and South India and the British Presidency of Bombay, Madras and Calcutta were untouched by the revolt. The revolt did not get support from all sections of society. A few Indian princes and chiefs remained aloof, such as Rajputs, Nizam of Hyderabad, rulers of Nepal, Nabha and Kashmir. Moreover, the Western educated Indians did not participate in the revolt. Here is an image of Colin Campbell. Now, let's talk about the results of the revolt. The revolt marked the end of the East India Company's rule in India and the British Crown took over the administration of British Indian territories in 1858. 
a cabinet rank minister called the Secretary of State for India, was put in charge of British political affairs in India. He was responsible to the parliament. The government general under the company became known as the Viceroy. The Viceroy was answerable to the Crown through the Secretary of State. Lord Canning, the last Governor General under the company, became the first Viceroy under the Crown. At a Darbar, that is gathering, held in Allahabad on November 1, 1858, he read out the Queen's proclamation. In application of the loyalty shown by the Indian princes during the revolt, the proclamation discontinued the doctrine of lapse and promised not to annex any more territories. It also promised non-interference in India's religious and social custom. This means that the British would no longer take interest in social and religious reform. They hoped this would win them the loyalty of the orthodox sections of the society. Here is an image of Lord Canning, the first Viceroy under the crown. Now, let me read out an extract from the Queen Victoria's proclamation of November 1858. We hold ourselves bound to the natives of our Indian territories by the same obligation of duty which bind us to our other subjects. It is our further will that our subjects of whatever race or creed be freely and impartially admitted to offices in our services, the duties of which they may be qualified by their education, ability, integrity and duly to discharge. To win the loyalty of the zamindars, the British recognized their traditional land rights and also gave them honors and titles. Henceforth, the British pursued the policy of divide and rule to prevent the Indians from uniting. They followed a policy of deliberate discrimination against the Muslim community. Here is an image of revolt of 1857. To remove all prospects of revolts, the army was recognized as to keep it well under British control. The proportion of European soldiers to Indian soldiers were increased. Strategic military positions and crucial military equipments such as artillery were placed exclusively in charge of European soldiers and officers. The British began to recruit fewer soldiers from Awadh, Bihar, Madras and other areas where there had been revolts in or before 1857. They now recruited more soldiers from among the Sikhs, Gurkhas, Pathans, Rajputs and Jats who had remained neutral or had helped the British during the revolt. Although the revolt failed, it marked the beginning of a broader struggle against the British rule. Student, that was it today. Now, let's wrap up and see what we have learned so far. The revolt of 1857 was quite widespread in area and evolved masses to great extent. Economic, political and social, religious and military causes were responsible for the revolt of 1857. The greased cartridges incident was the immediate cause of the revolt. The revolt of 1857 was a big challenge to British authority. It was led by the sepoys and supported by common people. The main centres of the revolt were Merit, Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Jhansi, Bareilly and Ara. Some important leaders of the revolt were Bhakt Khan, Nana Saheb, Tatya Tope, Azimullah, Begum Hazrat Mahal, Rani Lakshmi Bai, Khan Bahadur Khan and Kuwar Singh. The major reasons for the revolt of failure were its localized and unorganized nature, weak leadership and finances. Though the revolt was suppressed by the British, it shook their confidence and terrorized them, so they took urgent steps to avoid such situations in future. As a, res as a result, several changes were introduced in administration. The most important change that came about in the British administration after the revolt of 1857 was the transfer of power from the East India Company to the British Crown. That's all for today's students. I hope that you have learned something. We'll meet again in the next class.